Hey guys, how's it going and welcome to my new tutorial. Now in this video I'm going to be going over how I created the player bars in my old CS movie Infusion 2. Now there's two things quickly before I get into it. The first one being I'm getting a lot of people asking for more advanced tutorials. Now how my channel works and how I make tutorials all depends on the requests I get. So if you're looking for more advanced things be sure to link me examples because I don't really watch frag movies that often and I don't know what you would classify as advanced. So if you're after more advanced tutorials, link me examples either in the comments or in a message and I will see if I can help you out. And the second one being, I made this player bar about two to three years ago now and it is based off the Video Copilot HUD display tutorial. Now there's a few elements and a few things I took kind of directly out of that tutorial and then added a few things and changed some to make it a bit more unique. So this tutorial is kind of similar to that, however there are a few different things. So let's jump right into it. Now for this you're going to need Adobe After Effects and I am using CS5, however it should translate easily into other versions. So let's create a new composition by going up to composition and clicking new composition. Now I'm going to make this in 1280 by 720, 29.97 frames per second and we'll just call this player bar. Okay so now that we've done that 10 seconds should be long enough and we'll just change the background color to black. Okay so there we go. So the first thing we need to do is create a new solid and this will be pretty much all of those spinning elements you see within the video. Okay so 1280 by 720 make comp size and we'll just call this one or anything pretty much that doesn't really matter what you call this and we will click OK. Okay, so once we've got our solid, what we can do is go up to our rectangle tool up here, click and hold your mouse button and go down to the ellipse tool. Now what you want to do is go to the center of your solid here, then you want to click, hold shift, alt and control and drag outwards and you can see that creates a perfect circle from the center. So once you've done that, you can see it creates a mask. Now what you want to do is go down to your layers down here, click on mask 1 and press ctrl D to duplicate. Ok so once you've done that you want to set the second mask to subtract and you'll see it disappears and now if you go down in the options here you want to bring the mask expansion down and you can see it creates a ring. Now this is useful for a lot of things that affect and I've used it a ton of times for a lot of different things so that's pretty useful just that part there. Ok so the thickness for this is totally up to you depending on how thick you want your gadgets. So once we've done that, what we can do is grab our pen tool, again go to the middle of the layer and we want to click and we pretty much just want to move out and then go around the circle a little bit and then back into the center. And then we can set that one to subtract as well and you can see we're left with just a piece of our gadget here. Now the reason that we do that from the center is so if we want to change these points, you can see we just get the same effect everywhere. So once we've done that, what we can do is pretty much make this a 3D layer and we can add some motion blur by enabling that. And now what we can do now is press R to bring up our rotation, go down to Z rotation and we're going to add an expression to this. So we're going to alt click on the stopwatch here and we're going to type wiggle 0.5 and then 200 or 180 or something around there which is a similar value to the one he used in his tutorial. Okay, so now what that means is every half a second it's going to rotate uh, 200 degrees and you can see the effect it's giving off now and it's just randomly rotating around in a circle. So now if we get our layer here and duplicate that, you can see we've got two randomly rotating now and that is pretty much the basis of our player bar. Now what we can do is just duplicate this a couple of times and change the scaling by pressing S and just scaling a couple down like so. And there we go, we can see we're getting kind of the effect already. So that's pretty good right there. And that is pretty much all I'm going to show you for creating these. And you don't need to do exactly what I'm doing. You know, it's totally up to you and you can get as creative as you want. You can also double tap M again on your mask and bring up the expansion to thin out one of them. And then, you know, get creative, come up with something unique and don't copy other people's tutorials like I kind of did two to three years ago and that's pretty much it there. So now what we're going to do is highlight all of our layers, go up to layer and go down to pre-compose and what we'll do is we'll just call this gadget or something along those lines and you can see we've still got the effect there and what this allows us to do is create that zooming in and rotating effect without having to keyframe every layer. 
Alright, so now that we've done that, what we can go ahead and do is start animating this to fly in like I did. So before we do that, what we're going to do is click on our gadget here, press S and scale this down into the corner. Now the reason I'm doing this is just because this way I can create the entire player bar here and I can just overlay it and I don't need to worry about positioning it for every different separate clip or every different player. So the reason I made this composition 720p is because that is what most people render their CS videos in. And this way I can just put this one composition over the entire thing and I don't need to worry about positioning it for every single player. So now that that's in the corner, we'll just make sure it doesn't go out of the frame and it's pretty evenly spaced. So that's looking good right there. And now what I can go ahead and do is press P to bring up our position, press R to bring up our rotation and just animate this in. So what we're going to do is make it roughly a second and a half animation in. So keyframe position, X, Y, and Z rotation. Now this is totally up to you and I'm just doing this just as a demonstration. And what we can do is take it back in the Z position and we can just straighten this up if we want, just so it comes in kind of straight like so that should be good enough right there and then what we can do is kind of rotate this around about 270 degrees on the z rotation rotate it slightly on the y and then slightly on the x and if we highlight all of our keyframes go keyframe assistant easy ease you can see that it's kind of coming in like that now what we can do is hold shift again and press t and this will bring up the opacity and we can keyframe that from the start and move forward about a quarter of the way and make another keyframe and then change the first keyframe back to zero. Now this will add a nice fade in effect and you can see it's kind of just coming out from the distance like so. So now that we've done that, we can add our text into the middle like I had. Now at the time I used the font Bank Gothic, so there we go if you're curious on that. Now I just used the first three letters of my movie and then two and I positioned it right in the middle. So if we just scale that down and just make sure nothing runs into it. So there should be pretty much fine. Yep, so that's looking good right there. And if we go back, we can see that that rotates in as well, which is the reason why we pre-composed it. So we don't have to animate every single thing we add. And that is pretty much it. So once you've done that, what you can go ahead and do is grab your text tool and type your player name. So I'll just use my name as an example. And let's just move that. I'll put the link for this font if you want this in the description. And just make sure it's roughly lined up. And there we go. That is what our player bar is going to look like. And what I did was I waited till the logo was about here. Then I keyframed the opacity in on our text. So there we go like that. And you can see the whole player bar will last you know, 10 seconds at the moment, and then you can just fade it out at five if you don't want it that long or whatever. So that is pretty much how I created this player bar. So then what you can go ahead and do is enable your transparency grid and then render this out without the black. And if you're not sure how to do that, if you just look up on YouTube how to render from After Effects without a background or how to render a transparent video in After Effects, you will find your answer pretty easily. So there we go, that is the entire tutorial. I hope this helped anyone who was wondering. I hope you found this helpful, interesting. If you did, be sure to hit that like button to help my channel out. Be sure to subscribe for future tutorials and you can check out my previous tutorials on the screen now. Now in the next video, I'm gonna be showing you how to do this kind of scope transition. And this is a fairly simple tutorial as well. So remember, if you're after more advanced tutorials, be sure to send me a message with those. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.